and good morning and welcome to the cave files and this morning well i have jp with me this morning he's back. back like i say most of the time i'm back um but anyway we we have to cover each other um we have sergeant cameron joiner from the rocky mount police department with us this morning uh we thank you for being here thank you talk about a couple of cases this morning um get right into the jeff cobb case you know this is such a high profile case sergeant because half you know half the town knew him i mean he was a commissioner he owned a lot of land here he um frequented the um elks lodge he went here that i mean a lot of people knew him mm -hmm. and you know just a high profile person and so i think this is one of the most asked about cases because of that yes so, ma'am anyway we'll get started all right um well it's approaching about 10 years since this happened it happened on november um he was found on november the 11th of 2014. Um, mr cobb was last seen on november the 7th um leaving a local bar gator sports bar and that was the last time he was heard from so uh, he was uh, discovered by his brother um, who had called in and wanted a welfare check done. Officers responded there and during a sweep of the house they found him deceased. Um, so we, uh, Rocky Mount Police Department began the investigation, um, found several uh, people that he had associated with and, and that's been his in contact house. with. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pictures from his house and um it's still a still a case that we are we are still working it's still an um a cold case that is being actively worked even uh today okay um and i anything i say or jp says that you can't answer just say i can't answer that <laughs> sure it's that simple All right. because you know, far be it from us to compromise a case yeah. we do not want to do that at all we want to solve cases is what we want to do so um you know there's speculation that he liked women um so and there were items found in the house that would allude to you know we know that there was a hair tie we know that was a condom we hear all of these things so you know, are we leaning in that direction or not? Well, you know, that's something we're looking into. We're not ruling out anybody as a potential suspect at this time. You know, our, our investigation is broad, but you know, once we, if we're able to narrow it down to a, a specific suspect, then we can certainly say that. Um, some of the recent things that have been done in this case is there's a lot of uh, property, a lot of evidence seized from the residents and we've sent a lot of that uh, stuff off for like forensic and DNA analysis okay. to various uh, laboratories, uh, private laboratories, as well as the state crime lab in North Carolina to tr try to find some potential leads or potential suspects through uh, forensic evidence. Okay, well that's interesting. So in case you're out there saying, well, are they doing anything? Yes, we just can't know what they're doing because this is an investigation. But they are doing things then. You are actively working it. If you're sending things to a forensic lab, you are working the case. Absolutely. And we, uh, we get tips from time to time on this case. And all right. tips we get, we follow up with. Some of the tips are, are vague and, you know, it's, it's not specific information. But it's stuff we do follow up on. And, um, you know, any, any information at all, if anyone could provide any tips or anything, you know, we will we will take that information, we will assess it, and we will um, follow up and investigate it and either try to prove or disprove that it's any legitimate information. Now, one of the things I had heard is that he was stabbed, you know, violently multiple times with an instrument, I'm assuming like a screwdriver. It, uh, according to the autopsy report, yeah, he was stabbed multiple times with, uh, with some type of uh, instrument. The one thing that I had always kind of been curious of to know, and you making sure this, you may not, not was it a screwdriver that appeared to maybe have come from his home or somewhere else? Um, I, I don't think, based off the forensic autopsy, we can 
we can certainly say it came from his house or somewhere else. Um, we did uh, see some items from the house that we are testing um, at the uh, at the crime labs um, that have been tested. Um, obviously, that those tests, um, any DNA that is found or any fingerprints or any uh, forensic evidence is constantly ran against databases because gotcha. you know people get arrested from time to time and new entries are added into the databases. So those those things are being uh, routinely checked and run through the system. See, like, I mean, his house looked immaculate, like nothing out of place, looked like a manicure. It just his home appeared to be, you know, just a beautiful home. And a lot of times people's workshops or their garage tends to be a reflection of their home. So, like, he probably had name brand tools. They were probably in place, you know, that kind of thing. I was just curious as to if the screwdriver that was used appeared to have come from inside his home or from an unknown location. Yeah. That's one thing I had always kind of. And, and you know, I don't think we can 100% say that based gotcha. off of the evidence we have. Um, you know, it's it, very possible that it could have come from its home. I don't know many people that would carry a, a screwdriver, for instance, you know, in their pocket on them. That's what I've said. It, it very well could have Unless they were a tradesperson. Correct, correct. Driving a work truck, driving a work True. van. And, yeah, and, and that's. And, and just opportunity grabbed it and went right. with it right and, and that's why i say you know we can't say yeah. for sure whether it was brought to the home the the weapon was brought to the home right. or it was something that was just a a, a tool of opportunity right. in the house so. gotcha. well it's a very interesting and intriguing case yeah. and we look forward to you getting the evidence back and hopefully that will lead somewhere uh, lead you somewhere but if you do have a tip no tip is too small mm -hmm. you'll be happy if somebody calls in and it doesn't really lead you anywhere but you'll be happy to investigate it because that could be the one yep something that I or you think well I did see a car in the area that night but it probably wasn't that so I'm just not going yes call the authorities absolutely for anything no tip is better than a tip is better than none at all if you think you know something if you've even heard somebody say something that you say well that's hearsay they're not going to hear that yes they do they do want to hear what you have to say if you know anything about this case or somebody has said something to you that knew mr cobb um then please call the authorities and you know, we've got text to tip. We've got, there's the Rocky Mount text to tip right there. You can call Crime Stoppers, 977-1111, or you can call 972. 1456, that would be my direct line. Um, and any information, um, we will vet it, we will look into it and ensure it's followed up on. Okay. All right. Well, we'll move on to another case that I think you're going to talk about this morning that is a little more recent, I believe. That's right. Um, one of the cases that we are still investigating from last year uh, that occurred on Christmas Eve, uh, December 24th at around 2 o'clock in the morning, occurred in downtown Rocky Mount, um, just uh, in the 100 block of Tarboro Street. Um, a gentleman, Aaron Porter, was shot and killed uh, in that 100 block, and that is still a case that we are um, actively working on. Um, Mr. Porter uh, was um, visiting some of the uh, bars downtown, and as he was leaving for the evening or for the morning, he was uh, shot and killed uh, right there in the street. Mm -hmm. So that is a case that we are still actively working and. Um, any tips or any information in reference to that case um, would be greatly appreciated and be followed up on. What's his first name? Aaron. Aaron. Aaron Porter. Porter. Aaron Porter. If you know anything about this, and you know what, there are people out there, Sergeant, that know what happened. Mm -hmm. uh, th there was a, a dense crowd downtown that night, and. I, I truly believe that somebody saw something in that case and has some piece of information that may be able to help us solve that case. 
Okay. Well, if you see something, say something. If you know something, say something, for goodness sakes. So please, it is. it will be um, anonymous. Yes, ma'am. It will be anonymous. Um, so please call if you um, have any, if you know or you think you know or somebody has said something, please call on that case. Please call Sergeant um, Joyner at 972-1456. Right. And, of course, the tips coming in from text-to-tip and Crime Stoppers can remain completely anonymous. Um, do not have to provide a name or any information other than the tip. That's right. Because this company is out of Canada, I believe, the text-to-tip company of something. That, that's I believe correct. Said. It's out of Canada. So, anyway, it will be anonymous. And Team Cold Case has $15,000 in the pot, and we would love to pay out. That's the reason, you know, most people don't want to give you money. Well, we do. We would be happy to give you reward money up to $15,000 if you offer. It's upon arrest. It is not upon conviction. You don't have to go through the court system and all of that. I will write you a check. I will write you a check. Well, no, I will write a check, cash it at the bank, and I will hand you cash. I will not hand it to you, but Sergeant Joyner will. Um, he will hand you cash money for this tip if it pans out and if they get an arrest. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Okay. Can you say, <clears throat> look, man, I live down in the southern end of the county, and even down there in the Bailey, Middlesex, Spring Hope area, I'm asked about the the, the Jeff Cobb case more than anything mm -hmm. in this book, and it's just, you know, it's, there's a lot of uh, public interest in it. Uh, can you say if recently maybe um, there's been an uptick in uh, maybe tips? We have received some recent tips uh, within the past couple of months okay. um, and some information we've looked into and are still currently looking into. But, yeah, we still get tips uh, uh, as recent as about a month ago. Okay. And, and, and the reason I ask is, uh, and I even said this on the air a few, few weeks ago, we talked about it. And um, as I got ready to leave uh, the studio, I got a phone call. Um, and somebody was saying, look, you know, how do I share this information? And um, and I'm not saying that's who called you, but I mean, um, it's interesting that uh, there's been some movement. And, uh, you know, the public needs to understand, you know, this show works. Um, again, I'm not saying oh, that's yeah. where the tip come from, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of public interest in this and it demonstrates to the public that uh, it works. It's getting results. Absolutely. Well, what you're doing is giving, number one, we want to solve a crime. That's right. We want to get people off the street because, I won't say most, but a lot of these people are reoffending. They've done it. They're in the database. Yep. They, they've done, they've been arrested before and before and before, and they keep on and on and on doing things and, until you get them off the street. So um, it's your duty, if you know something, to do that. Number two, giving closures closure to families is important. I mean, if you were in that situation, you would certainly want to know what happened to your loved one. I mean, you really would. Mm -hmm. So we really would like for you, if you know anything on these two cases, to please call, or any case, hey, mm -hmm. any case in this book, because there's others from Rocky Mount too, or Nash County, or Edgecombe County, Halifax County, we don't care. Um, if you know about a case, please contact the authorities. I mean, you can always call Crime Stoppers um, if you feel more comfortable doing that or text a tip. So anyway, we just want you to call. So, isn't that right? That's right. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for being with us this morning. We thank you for having you me. We didn't too bad this morning, did we? No, ma'am. This is his first time on TV, but um, I'm sure it won't be his last. So. Anyway, thank you for coming, and we'll see you the third week in next month. You or somebody, whoever you send. Me or one of the guys on my team. Yes, that's right. Well, thank you for what you do. That's thank exactly you. right. So it was great meeting you. We'll be right back right after this. And welcome back to the K-Files. Well, 
Rocky Mount PD wanting the books for you mm-hmm. because I tell you what, they get kudos. They showed up. They did. They, they did. showed up. Nash County showed up first of the month. So good for them. Good on them. Mm-hmm. So I'm just anyway. glad to hear some movement on the, um, yeah. on the uh, Jeff Cobb. Wasn't that interesting that they've sent in some stuff mm-hmm. to the lab? Mm-hmm. I wonder mm-hmm. what it was. It makes you wonder what it, it was. It does. But I won't go ask. No, I wasn't either. Yeah. But it was, um, it was we good. We do, you know, work with them and want them to feel comfortable coming on the show. Yeah. And we don't want to badger them about... Um, they tell us what they can. I mean, when they come, you know, and we can push it a little bit. But um, they tell us what they can as to not compromise the case. So... You know, there was two things I wanted to tell you real quick. Okay. Um, you know, I went on a cruise, yes, had a you good did. time. We went to Porta Plata. Um, one of the wild things that happened was, um, you know, our 22 year old and 21 year old and our 15 year old went with us. So they all went. They all, all went, went. And I, we had a rule. We said, look, we don't care what you do, but if you leave your room, their room was directly across the hall from ours. Mm-hmm. Knock on the door, tell us you're leaving, tell us you're back. Other than that, do what you need to do. Mm-hmm. So about 2 or 3 a.m. one night, we were just off the coast of Cuba. Um, my son knocked on the door and said, look, I'm going to a nightclub. I said, that's fine. You know, have fun. You're 22. You're an adult. And um, fell asleep. My wife wakes up, and she's in a panic. And I could, I could hear my wife like, where are you at? What is wrong? What's going on in the background? And, I mean, I rolled out of bed and started putting my clothes on. And um, so my son was in a hot tub with about 15 or 20 other <laughs> young adults. Um, and, you know, the drinking age there in Porta Plata, where we had been, is like 18. Mm-hmm. And one of the young adults had had too much to drink. Well, his dad came to get him out of the hot tub. Mm-hmm. And they had a confrontation. Oh. And my son said, look, you know, when they started arguing, I... God, I started drying off. You know, I had made my mind up, you know, that he was coming on back to the room. Mm-hmm. And um, so this kid looks at his dad. He says, you know what? He said, I've had about all of this I can take. Um, and jumped over the side of the boat. Oh, jumped no. Jumped right at the side of the boat. They ain't found him yet. He's Are gone. You serious? And if you don't think it has not rattled my son, it has. The kid was literally sitting beside him in the hot tub. Oh my! I surely didn't know that this was where this story was going. Yeah. Like oh that. no! It's it's been on Fox News. It, I mean, what? It has really rattled him. He said, "Dad, we didn't even stop." I said, "Yeah, we did stop, and they did. It took about five miles to turn this cruise ship around." But my oh God, my. it's pitch black. It's if you've ever been on a cruise ship. I mean, at three, four o'clock in the morning, you can't see beyond ten foot. Oh my! There's not God. another beacon of light. No. Uh-huh. Anyway, it was just, it was a um, uh, bad situation. The kid was 20 years old, probably had too much to drink. That Clearly he did that. and uh, jumped right off the side of the boat. I cannot believe that. Yeah. I Terrible. Terrible. Ter- believe that. Ter- anyway, uh-huh. you, he didn't get far from us the rest of the trip. I bet he did yeah. not. He didn't. Woo. But other than that, I mean, we had a good time. I'm, uh, you know, my heart goes out to that family. Absolutely. Um, but, you know, we had a good time just... You know, my kids will remember that forever. Oh, uh, well, yes, they will. Um, not a good story. But. The other thing I was going to tell you is, did you see on Facebook where the guy has his cell phone out and he's trying to take pictures? Well, not trying. He took pictures of the young lady at the Target. She had squatted down to like look yes, at. Yes, I th- saw that. Oh my gosh! Yeah, you know, my hat is off to the the lady who called him Absolutely. out. Absolutely. You know, how yes. many people would have turned that, 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 the corner and uh, take, right take him to the next aisle? Yeah. You know, look at that. And then he oh. tried to play it off like he didn't intend to do. Yes, he did. Oh, yes, he did. And oh, yes. look, if he's, he's done oh. that before. Yes, he has. He's, oh, yeah. Probably so, you know, times. we always say, if you see something, say something. My hat is off to the young lady who saw something yes. and said something. Yeah, and, and there you go right there. 
Um, he needs to be caught before he does this to somebody else. And apparently he's got ties to uh, volunteering at school or something. I don't know if it was in Johnston County or where, but yeah, you need to check into this character. Because if he's got behavior patterns like this that's yes. coming to the surface, he's doing other things. Yes, absolutely. But my hat's off to, uh, again, and the, the you young lady hear, that said it. Oh, absolutely. Um, did you hear about the case that twenty in 2022, the, this couple killed their two children? I saw that. They never saw jail time at all. All. I mean, I would have thought they would have been in jail awaiting the trial. This is where the, the, the kids disappeared around Christmas like five years ago. I, I don't know. Okay. I can't remember the details of it. But I just remember that, and I am trying to find out, and I'm going to get myself in trouble, but I'm trying to find out who the judge is. Mm. Because the, the, I want to know. I want some answers on that case. The public wants some answers. Everywhere I went that day, once it was posted, they said, what gives with this? What in the world? They're not in jail? They got a m very minimal, you know, bond, got out, nothing. Why? I mean, evidently, it could not be proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that they did something to the children. I don't know. That's probably what it's going to come up. But I want to know, and I want to know who the jury was. You know, I was going to call the DA, but I mean, he don't set bond. DAs don't set bond. But I was just going to see if... Um, was this a local case? Yes. I can, I'll, I'll have to pull it out. I'll get it because we've talked about that case. When I saw the pictures, I said, oh yes, there they are. You know, I, I remember those those folks. So um, it's not in the book because it's 2022, but and we don't put them in the book that fat. You know, really, I don't think it takes us a little bit. So it may be in the book. I'll see. But anyway, I just cannot believe that they got nothing and they walked away. Um, just sad, sad, sad. Yeah. So, anyway, well, we might as well go ahead to break before okay. we get started into some cases, and we'll be right back. And welcome back to the K-Files, and uh, we'll start, I'll let JP get started, and we'll do a couple of cases for you this morning that's in our book. We talked about Jeff Cobb, talked about another case that... Um, Rocky Mount had since December. They're wanting some help on. Um, so we will get into a couple in the book this morning as well. There is one I wanted to talk about real quick. Okay. Um, and this was uh, one of my, um, she, the mother came on a few weeks ago. It was yes. uh, Stephanie Hooper. Mm -hmm. um, this is from 2023. A uh, suspicious death in Rocky Mount is, you know, is the way Rocky Mount mm -hmm. PD is working it. And um, is. Rocky Mount PD officers were dispatched to the 1000 block of Williford Street in Rocky Mount in the early morning hours of Friday, April 14th, 2023. The 911 call came in um, about a deceased person found in the home. The person who found uh, her went to a neighbor's house to call 911. Rocky Mount Police Department identified the deceased female as Stephanie Hooper, 41 years of age. The medical examiner has determined the death to be accidental. That's what's the information that's been provided to us by fighting mm -hmm. crime. Mm -hmm. um, there has been some questions to kind of surface since all of this has happened. Right. Um, and since fighting crimes got involved, and uh, trying to get a little more information. Some people who had been cooperating with law enforcement, some people who had been trying to share information with family members. Once we aired it, once we started letting people know there was maybe some reward information, if they could bring forward some tips. These people have turned their phones off. These people have disappeared. These oh. people have quit cooperating with law enforcement. Really? Which feeds 
my suspicion, because anytime you go to put money in it to reward people, guilty people panic. So that feeds a, a, a suspicion of mine that uh, maybe there is more to this more to than the story, yes, it, it is. Like to me. So, folks, if you know anything about uh, Stephanie Hooper, please um, reach out to Fighting Crime, reach out to Rocky Mount Police Department. You know, there is reward money for uh, any information that you have that could lead to you know, an arrest, Absolutely. if there is more to this story than what I truly believe it is. Again, Team Cold Case pays up to $15,000. All tips remain anonymous, 252-406-6736. Um, so I just want to kind of touch base on that again this morning. That's exactly right. Well, good. I'm glad you brought that up. Golly, that's, that's um, something. Jumping into book, I mean, I think one of the last cases we talked about was uh, uh, Jeff Cobb. Mm -hmm. uh, I have yes. it marked here. Um, so we will jump down to Demond Rashawn Batts. This case is from December 27th, 2015. Demond Batts, who was 24 years old at the time, was shot and killed at MLK Park in Rocky Mount. Rocky Mount Police got a report of shots fired in the area. Bats, who was from Tarboro, was found lying in a pool of blood on Virginia Street in oh. Rocky Mount near MLK Park around 11.40 a.m. EMS tried to revive Bats, but they were unsuccessful. Another one of these holiday you know, around exactly. Christmas. Um, I mean, so I meant to say something to the officer because the case that he brought up was um, Christmas in Eve, December on Christmas yeah. Eve. Yeah. So um, it just um, seems to be uh, a rash of that happening mm -hmm. more at um, holidays than, mm -hmm. especially around Christmas time and Thanksgiving things like that. Mm -hmm. So anyway, yeah. If you know anything about Demond Bats. Um, another 24 year old another person in their 20s that lost their life and unnecessarily just unnecessarily didn't have to happen mm -hmm. um, so if you know anything about it he was from Tarboro and found on Virginia Street in Rocky Mount which is right there where OIC is if you know where OIC is it's right off of Grand Avenue so right there um, this next case is from April 17th, 2016, Jaquan Antonio Underhill. Underhill was in a vehicle with others traveling West Raleigh Boulevard in Rocky Mount um, when someone opened fire on the vehicle near Kitchen Drive. He was taken to the hospital where he later died of his injuries. Jaquan Antonio Underhill, April 17th, 2016. Sounds like he was shot on West Raleigh Boulevard in Rocky Mount. Mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm. Sad. Now, now, is that near where the airplane crashed? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the airplane crashed, if you know, Nashville Road and Raleigh Road and Paul Street is right there too. Um, close to that corner um, is where it crashed. You know, that's a, even at night, that's, you know, a relatively busy intersection. It is. I'm kind of shocked that n n no one was, thankfully, well, hurt or killed. You know, the poor guy was almost made out to be, from the very time the plane crashed, was made out to be a criminal. And I felt so bad, I called my friend, who is the um, chairman of the board of the airport board authority. I knew he would know. He um, called me the next morning. He was out there where the plane was. Called me the next morning. He said, Sandra, I know it's out there that you have to file a flight plan. You have to file a flight plan. No, you don't. The guy was perfectly within his realm not to file a flight plan because of the size of his plane. I thought it had to do with the size. It has to do with the size. 
So he's not guilty of that. Now, Gary is going to call, Gary Hodges is who I've been talking to. Gary's going to call into the morning show once they have finished the investigation. There, there were six FAA, the next morning, six FAA members came to investigate, investigators came. And is still under investigation. They're trying to, he was from um, Delaware. But he was headed to Florida. He had, he was 21 years old. Wow. And just bought the plane April 10th. And we don't know at this point. Now, they will know more. And and the guy's fine. He's fine. Oh, yeah. My hat's off to him, too. I mean, that's <laughs> that took you know. skill and talent. But where he's not fine, and he's 21, and I want to put him over my knee and spank him good, he ran out of gas. Yeah, no, he should have known better than that. Because I'm sure there's airports between here and Delaware. Yes. And he was an instructor as well. Yeah, well. That is what I get him for. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not saying he committed a crime, but, dude. But I feel sorry for him because that kind of plane, I asked Gary, I said, you know, how much would you estimate that a plane like that would cost? He said, 60 to 80,000, poor guy. It's no, Gary said, I don't think it's no putting that plane back together. He said, and he said he, you know, there's sixty to eighty thousand dollars. Young guy, you know, I don't know. Well, I'm glad he was able to walk away. Yeah, I am too. I am really and glad it, that he was and okay. And it's my understanding everybody on the ground was okay. Yes, yes. I think it yeah. didn't hurt anybody. So, um, but just a little bit about that incident, and, and we're still waiting. There could be changes in the story after the investigation, but this is just what Gary knew at that particular time when I talked to him, so. Anyway. Well, if he'd have made it five, ten more miles, he'd have, Yeah. Was he on the way to Rocky Mountain Wilson to get some fuel? No, he was actually on his way to Florida. He was hit, he wasn't going, they said, I don't think, to the airport. He might have been, uh, but Gary didn't say that. Um, well, he's bound well, he to be. Well, he better have been he trying to he find some He knew he was out of fuel. gas. He, Maybe, yeah, maybe he was because it was so close to the airport. Right. I mean, it was on 97, mm -hmm. so I guess he was. But, um, you know, it could possibly be that he had just been delivered the plane. He said people don't realize how these planes are handed off constantly, you know handed off and he might have been delivering the plane he had just bought it but then I don't know um, Gary said we don't know at this point why he was going to Florida or whatever so anyway mm. Mm. well I'm glad everybody's okay yes we, I can, am too. we can replace a plane that's right all right um, we've got time for one more um, how about Keenan Lamont Newton Keenan Lamont Newton. Um, this case is from June 10th, 2016. Around 9.54 p.m., officers responded to 1011 Branch Street in Wilson to check on a person's welfare. The caller reported that a person was lying face down in the backyard of a residence and was not moving. Officers arrived and found that the victim had suffered a gunshot wound. EMS arrived and determined that the victim, Keenan Newton, was deceased. Mm. Keenan Lamont Newton, June 10th, 2016, basically 10 o'clock at night, um, 1011 Branch Street, downtown Wilson, found in the backyard, shot, lying face down. Wow. Mm. Sad. But there again, there's another Branch Street case. Mm -hmm. You know, Clark Street, Branch Street, that area has just took a beating, really has. Um, but if you know anything about Keenan Lamont Newton, of course, you know what to do. Please call 406-6736. That's the hotline number. You can call Twin County Crime Stoppers, 977-1111. You can call text to tip but call somebody. You can call 972-1456. And you can talk to Sergeant Joyner. Mm -hmm. So, um, however you do it, if you know anything or you've heard anything on this case, please 
give the authorities a call. Thank you, JP, for yes, being with me this morning. I'm glad you got your water fixed and mm. glad you got back safely from your cruise. Woo, what an experience. Yes, yes. I, can, I still can't I believe. I like the cruise a whole lot better than the uh, water experience. Oh, I bet, yes. It's not fun having water issues and it's yeah. not fun not having water. When a woman don't have water, it's yeah. bad. I told my kids we were going to play Little House on the Prairie for a few days. Oh, no. Uh -uh. <laughs> no, I don't even like camping. <laughs> no. But anyway, um, make it a great day, everybody, and we'll see you next Thursday.